Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 11th Awarth tutorial and in this video we're going to start making a user model. Okay then, so in the grand flow of things right now, we're right about here. We're in this passport callback function and what we're aiming to do at the minute is take the user that's come back from Google, take some information from their profile and then store it in our own database because remember, if we do that, we can collate extra information about that user and we can also tell if they've been to our website before and logged in before. So that's what we're doing at the minute. We're in this kind of general area in the passport callback function where we're trying to take that user from Google, take the information from their profile and store it in our own database and we're using MongoDB. So in the last video, we set up that database using MLab online and in this video, I wanna to start to actually save the data or at least create some kind of user model which is gonna define what data we want to store in our database. So just a very quick refresh on models and schemas, first of all. And if you want more information about this, feel free to check out my MongoDB tutorials for beginners. I'll leave the link down below. So we're gonna to need to set up a user model and a schema in order to save users to our database. So in basic terms, a model represents our collection in MongoDB. So the user model is gonna represent the collection of user records inside our database, okay? So we keep all of our users stored within the same kind of collection and we use that user model to interact with that collection to retrieve records from it, that kind of thing. And a user schema defines the data structure of a particular record in that model. So for example, you can see each record here has a name, ID and age. The schema is going to define those properties and say, look, these are the three properties we want to store in a record and these are their types. They're a string, number and number. So we need to define both of these things. A user schema to say what kind of information we're going to store in a user record and then also a user model which is going to represent our whole collection of users. Okay then, so let's create this user model. The first thing I'll do is create a new folder to keep everything organized and I'm going to call this models and inside we'll create a new file which is going to be called user-model.js. So this is where we're going to create our user model using Mongoose. So the first thing we need to do because we're using Mongoose to create this model is import it. So I'll say const mongoose is equal to require and it's mongoose. So don't forget we installed that before. And the second thing I want to create is a constant called schema. And I'm using a capital S for this. This is the convention and set that equal to mongoose, which we just required dot schema. Okay. So now if we want to create a new schema for a particular model, a new data structure, if you like, we're going to say we want to use a new schema, right? So mongoose is providing this for us. It's allowing us to create this schema, this kind of document or record data structure so that we can pass that into a model, okay? So let's define this schema first of all. How do we want our users to look? Well, we'll keep it pretty simple to begin with. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create a constant and we're gonna call this user schema, right? So this is gonna be the schema for our user model. This is gonna define how we want our user records to look. So we're gonna set this equal to a new schema which is this thing right here right remember we're using mongoose.schema so we're creating a new schema right here and that is a function because it's going to create this schema for us and inside that we pass an object and in this object is where we define how we want our records to look so which properties do we want them to have well we're going to keep it simple i'm going to say we want a username for each user and that is going to be a string so on the left, we say what the property name is going to be. On the right, it's the type of that property. So this is a string, right? Uh, the next one is going to be a Google ID because they're logging in using Google. So I think it makes sense to store that Google ID because say, for example, a user comes to our website for the first time and they're logging using Google, then we're going to retrieve that Google ID. Now, if they log in a second time, we need to identify if that user has been to our website before. And the way we can do that is by storing the first time around their Google ID so that the second time they log in using Google, we retrieve the ID from the Google profile and we can make a lookup to our database and say, okay, can I find a record 
with this Google ID stored in it. And if we do store that, then we can match it up and retrieve that record from our MongoDB. Make sense? So we're gonna store this Google ID so that we can identify returning users to our website that have used Google to log in. So let's say Google ID, and that's also gonna be a string. So I think we'll keep it at that for now. These are the two properties we might add to this later on, but these are the two properties that I want to be in each of our user records. So we have that schema now, we've defined how our records in the user model are gonna look. So let's create this model now. Now this is really simple to do. We'll just say const user with a capital U. That's again a convention. If we're creating a model, we give it a capital letter to begin with. And then this is gonna be equal to mongoose dot model. So this is how we create a model. And this is gonna take two parameters right here. First of all, the model name. What do we wanna call this model? This collection, if you like. Well, I wanna call it user. And MongoDB is gonna pluralize that for us in our database, and we'll see that later on MLab. Okay, so it's gonna say, okay, well, the model is called user. I'm gonna call this collection users, right? So this user model is gonna represent that user's collection. Okay, now we also need to pass in a schema because we wanna tell MongoDB, look, for every record inside this user model or this user collection, I want you to define the structure of those records to be like this over here, this schema, okay? So each of these records is gonna be according to this user schema. So that's it, we've created our model now. That's all there is to it, very simple. Now, we're gonna be using this user model in different files later on. Uh, specifically, we're gonna be using it in this callback function for Passport right here. So what we do need to do is export this model right here so that we can use it in another file. So dead simple module.exports is gonna be equal to user. And we don't need to export the user schema, only the user, right? Because that takes into account the user schema and this is what we're gonna be using to interact with the user collection, right? Remember the model represents the collection. So we can use this model to interact with the collection to do things like save records, retrieve records, update them, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so there we go, my friends. We've now created our schema and our model for users so that in the next tutorial, we can go back into the Passport setup over here, into the callback function where we retrieve their information from their Google profile. We can take that and then we can use the user model we've just created to create a new user record in our database.